Did you know that before Tom Holland became the MCU Spider-Man, that Sony not only had planned sequels to the Amazing Spider-Man movies, but an entire cinematic universe based on that franchise? Unfortunately, that Spider-Verse was just not meant to be, and it has faded away as yet another of the legends of fandom. Greetings fanboys and fangirls, I'm E. Rodden of the Blockbuster Buster and welcome to Legends of Fandom where we talk about the fanboy films and shows that almost happened. And boy do you guys love Spider-Man as Amazing Spider-Man 3 has been my most requested Legends of Fandom for six years. So thank you for your enthusiasm. Now let's begin. Once upon a time comic book movies were rare, especially big budget blockbuster ones. This all changed in the late 90s and early 2000s with the release of three very successful films, Blade, X-Men, and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. A movie that wasn't just a hit, it was a mega hit, shattering every record that was established by Tim Burton's Batman 13 years prior and crossing the coveted $500 million mark in less than two weeks. Suffice it to say, Spider-Man was big business in Hollywood and the future looked bright for Sony Pictures. Unfortunately, there was an itty bitty little problem. According to the licensing deal that Sony made for the character, they had to release a Spider-Man movie every three years, or the rights would revert back to Marvel Entertainment. This was not a problem at first, as Sam Raimi and crew had plenty of ideas for Spider-Man movies and would often develop the next movie while making the previous one. However, with each subsequent Spider-Man sequel, the productions kept getting bigger and more complex. So much so that for Spider-Man 3, they would have to shoot up to three scenes on three different stages simultaneously in order to get the film done by the deadline. Sam Raimi says that making Spider-Man 3 was one of the most difficult experiences of his life. So much so that both him and Tobey Maguire had verbal agreements that they were going to take a break after the movie and that they wouldn't move forward with Spider-Man 4 until they were both satisfied with the script. Unfortunately, Sony couldn't wait for their star and director to be satisfied with the script quality and still make the three-year deadline. So Sony made the very difficult decision of scrapping Spider-Man 4 and moving forward with a reboot instead. Enter Mark Webb's Amazing Spider-Man, starring Andrew Garfield as our favorite web-slinging hero. This time around, Sony had a more realistic plan for meeting the three-year deadline by releasing spin-off movies in between each of the core Spider-Man movies. This would give the cast and crew of the core Spider-Man movies up to six years to prepare for each sequel. All the while, the spin-offs featuring Spider-Man supporting characters would satisfy the three-year deadline in between. This would have led to them creating their own cinematic universe. And thanks to the Sony hack, we know their plan would have done a little something like this. First, they would have released the first two Amazing Spider-Man movies, followed by a Sinister Six movie, then Amazing Spider-Man 3, followed by a Venom solo movie, and then Amazing Spider-Man 4. We also know that one of the proposed spin-offs would have followed a young Aunt May in the 60s as a spy. I can't make that shit up. Unfortunately, their plan was derailed almost from the get-go, as the first Amazing Spider-Man movie was met with mixed reviews and it underperformed at the box office. And then the second Amazing Spider-Man movie was met with largely negative reviews and it also underperformed at the box office. In spite of the rocky start, Sony had every intention to move forward with Amazing Spider-Man 3, even if they had to skip their proposed Sinister Six movie. But all of that changed after a meeting with Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige. Fun fact, before the MCU, Feige worked on the original Spider-Man movies with Sam Raimi so he had a good standing relationship with the studio. So much so, the propositions were made to make Spider-Man part of the MCU almost from the beginning. But they were turned down. This all changed after Captain America the Winter Soldier was an unprecedented hit. And Feige asked Winter Soldier directors Anthony and Joe Russo to change their next Captain America movie from a simple follow-up to the far bigger and more ambitious Captain America Civil War. So co-director Joe Russo decided to double down on that ambition by requesting to use his all-time favorite Marvel character, Spider-Man. At the time, with Sony keeping a firm grip around the Spider-Man IP, that request seemed impossible. But as we have learned for the past decade, Kevin Feige eats the impossible and poops success. So he proposed a joint custody deal with Sony over the use of Spider-Man. 
and the timing just so happened to be perfect. As Sony wasn't doing well with their current Spider-Man franchise, and they were being asked to collaborate with the biggest and most successful film franchise in the business at the time. So Kevin Feige's proposition was just too good to pass up. So, Sony scrapped Amazing Spider-Man 3 and the Spidey Cinematic Universe in favor for Spidey joining the MCU and rebooting the franchise again, which proved to be a very good decision. But the question remains, what would an Amazing Spider-Man 3 movie be like? Unfortunately, the movie was canceled before production began, so we don't have a script. What we do have are a few scattered reports from people that worked on the first two movies and a few little details that we got from the Sony hack. As I said before, the follow-up to Amazing Spider-Man 2 was supposed to be a Sinister Six movie, penned by Drew Goodard, which was teased during that scene with all the high-tech backpacks in the Oscorp basement. Full details about this movie are hard to come by, but what we do know is that the movie would have revealed that the man in the shadows was the gentleman, Gustav Byers, played by Michael Massey and he was the one that provided the Rhino with his tech as part of a bigger scheme where he would use Oscorp's technology to give powers to five more criminals so they could go on a covert mission under his command. A mission that would have seen one of the members of the team dying. As to which one, we don't know. The movie would have been like Ocean's Eleven meets Suicide Squad, and the whole thing would have been a setup for Amazing Spider-Man 3, where Spider-Man would have taken on the Sinister Six for the first time, who would have been joined by the Vulture as their new sixth member, as he would have been making his cinematic debut in this movie very much in the same way that it was planned for the original Spider-Man 4 movie that would have been directed by Sam Raimi. And the Sinister Six's assault on Spider-Man in the city of New York would have been part of a larger scheme concocted by a resurrected Norman Osborn, played by Chris Cooper, who would have become King Goblin by the end of the movie. The film would have also featured Shailene Woodley as Mary Jane Watson, who actually filmed scenes as Mary Jane Watson for Amazing Spider-Man 2, but they were deleted. Also under contract to appear was Felicity Jones as Felicia Hardy. Whether or not she would have become the Black Cat in this movie is unclear, but due to the fact that this movie is already so damn crowded, I sincerely doubt it. In this movie, Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker was supposed to officially start working for the Daily Bugle, where two major characters were supposed to be established. The first one being J. Jonah Jameson, who believe it or not, Mark Webb wanted J.K. Simmons to reprise his role from the Raimi films. Webb was so adamant about Simmons returning as Jameson that if he couldn't get him, he planned for Jameson to just be a disembodied voice off screen and on television. Personally, I just love how J.K. Simmons is a constant in almost every Spider-Verse. And the other really important Daily Bugle character that was going to be established in this movie was Peter Parker's rival, Eddie Brock, who would have officially become Venom in his own standalone movie directed by Alex Kurtzman. Interestingly enough, while Sinister Six and Amazing Spider-Man 3 were canceled, the Venom movie was retooled and reworked into the very, very silly Tom Hardy movie that we know and love. Now, due to the fact that Andrew Garfield was only under contract to make three Amazing Spider-Man movies, there's heavy speculation that if there would have been a fourth movie, that during that film, Peter Parker would have passed the torch to Miles Morales, which has been partially confirmed by cast interviews and the Sony hack. So this is what Amazing Spider-Man 4 might have been like, and be warned, it gets a little nutty. This installment would have seen Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man have his first confrontation with Venom, and while that is going on, Peter would start experimenting with his dad's genetic manipulation technology to, believe it or not, resurrect Gwen Stacy. And it works. But she doesn't come back quite right. This Gwen is a little edgier and more reckless. And midway through the movie becomes carnage. Okay, I have to admit, that is a pretty badass twist. So the climax of the movie would have seen Spider-Man and Venom team up to take on Carnage and Peter sacrificed himself to save this new version of Gwen from the symbiote, therefore opening the path for Miles to not only take over as Spider-Man, but as the face of the franchise. And presumably, after witnessing Peter's heroism, the new Gwen would have been inspired to become Spider-Gwen, aka Spider-Woman, aka Ghost Spider. Now, while we might never know what their true plans were for the Amazing Spider-Man cinematic universe, we do know that their plans for Miles Morales were retooled and reworked into the remarkable Spider-Verse movies that deserve all the praise and success that they get. 
and that a lot of their plans for the Sinister Six movie were retooled and then used for all of these standalone villain movies that they keep making. But the less we say about those, the better. Now, because of the success of Spider-Man No Way Home, which featured Andrew Garfield as his version of Spider-Man, there's been a lot of speculation about Sony potentially reviving the Amazing Spider-Man franchise. <laughs> Sorry guys, no, that's not gonna happen. The studio only cares about the numbers, and as far as they're concerned, both Amazing Spider-Man movies were duds. All the while, the MCU Spider-Man movies have gone on to become a multi-billion dollar franchise. So yeah, they're going to stick to what's making them money. But what do you think? Are you happy with the way things turned out with Tom Holland and the MCU? Or are you still curious to see where the Amazing Spider-Man movies would have gone? Feel free to let me know in the comment section below, as we have once again reached the end of this video. So. Do you know of any fanboy films or shows that almost happened? Feel free to let me know at erod at inbox.com. And who knows, your suggestion might end up being the topic of the next Legends of Fandom. Until then.